Today, I'm going to show you how to seamlessly blend two objects together in Blender 4.1. By the way, most information from this tutorial is from this amazing YouTube video right here. However, there's a couple new things to keep in mind when doing this now. All the resources for this video are in the description. As you can see here, I have an example scene with some rocks and some other assets scattered around, with the textures of these objects bleeding into this one grass material. The further I move these objects down, the more it disappears into the grass. I can also adjust the fall off where the grass texture starts with this cube. If you already have assets for a scene though and you just want to go right to the node setup, feel free to skip here. The assets used in this scene are directly from the Quixel Bridge library which holds a collection of over 18,000 free assets and growing. If you're like me and you've had this issue of Quixel Bridge not being able to export to Blender for the past couple years, then go to this link in the description and the first comment has a solution, saying to delete the old add-on and install the new one here. Disclaimer, this is only applicable if you're using a version of Blender after 2.9. Okay, let's start a new project and bring in our assets. I'm going to use this collection of roots and this grass texture for my scene. Doesn't matter what assets you choose. All your downloaded assets can be found in this purchase tab on the left. Okay, middle mouse button is to navigate around. Holding down shift and middle mouse button, you can pan, and by holding down control and middle mouse button, you can zoom in and out. Make sure you have the node wrangler add-on enabled. By doing this, we can go to edit, preferences, add-ons, and then type in WRAN, and then it should show up right there and then make sure that this checkbox is checked. Okay, let's delete everything. Um, unless you, of course, you already have a scene, then we're gonna press Shift A, add a plane, go to your texture in Quixel Bridge, and then click Export. If this doesn't work, either try again, or you can also try and find it in your folder and manually bring in the textures by pressing Control Shift T on our principal BSDF and selecting all our image textures. Don't worry about selecting other things too, Blender knows to only import in the important texture maps. Right now, we can't see anything because we're in solid view. So go to the top right corner of your screen and select Viewport Shading. This is what Quixel Bridge gives us after exporting our textures into Blender. So let's break this down real quick. Albedo is the color of our grass, and the one below that is Ambient Inclusion, which is just a lighting technique to simulate softer shadows that should naturally occur if this object wasn't just a flat plane. The one below that is a Roughness node, which controls how shiny or dry an object is. Then last, but definitely not least, is our Normal node, which controls the amount of depth and bump our texture has. The higher the strength, the more bumpy my texture looks. If you want to change the scale of your texture, we can add an object that's connected to our texture coordinate, which is a quick and easy way to adjust the scale of our texture in our scene without having to navigate through our shader editor first. Okay, now how are we going to put the grass texture onto our roots? Let's go into the grass texture first and box select everything except the material output, and then press Ctrl G and this makes this into a group. You can go in and out of the group by pressing tab, just like going in and out of edit mode in the 3D viewport. Now, let's change the name of our group to grass. Now we can go into our root texture and press shift A to add our grass. Press shift A and add a mix shader, and then plug in both of our BSDS. Right now, the factor is controlling how much of each texture it's showing, zero being grass and one being the original texture. But we want to add a gradient from the grass to the rock, not just a blend like this. To do this, we're going to add a color ramp and then plug it into the factor. Okay, now we're going to add a gradient texture and plug that into the factor of our color ramp. Right now, our gradient texture is the completely wrong way. We can see this by pressing Control shift and clicking on our color ramp. To fix this, we're going to use the same trick we did with the grass and add a texture coordinate to our gradient texture and use the color picker to select a new object. Let's do a cube this time. Now when I move the cube, it moves the gradient, but it's still the wrong way. So we're going to select our cube, press R, then Y, then negative 9, 0, and bring our cube down. Beautiful. That's the fall off that we wanted. And there we go. We have that beautiful fall off from the roots to the grass. You can definitely leave it like this and have this blurry fall off, or we can make this even more realistic with a couple more notes. Let's add some more color ramps by grabbing a mix color and plugging this into the factor of our first color ramp, and then change the mix color to subtract. Add another color ramp into the factor of our mix color. Let's add a noise texture into the top of our color ramp. In Blender, a noise texture works just like a randomness generator. Now, plug in our mapping node into the noise texture. And we can see exactly what our noise texture is doing by pressing Control shift and then left click. Adjusting our color ramp to see what works best. We can transform this even more though. If we add a mix color after our gradient texture and then plug in our diffuse slash abido map from our grass texture into our color ramp, leading to the mix color, making sure it's set to color burn so then we can create a more distinct transition from the grass to rock 
using this color ramp to adjust the fall off and harshness of our grass blades. Make sure this texture is connected to a texture coordinate set to the same object as our other grass texture and making sure it's going from object to vector so all the grass is the same scale. Now it's time for the fun part. Select everything except our original texture and then press Ctrl G to group them. Now all you have to do is add our texture blend node to any object you want in your scene and you have that beautiful blend. All this is amazing but completely useless if you don't have an idea for a project. If you want to learn how I never lose ideas for Blender projects, click here.